how's it going? So, uh, I have Cameron here, obviously. Um, always lovely to have her on the show. But um, <laughs> I wanted... Thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, of course. Of course. I wanted to do something a little bit different today. Um, just so you guys can see, like, a less robotic version of me. and more of kind of who I am, like, normally. You know, I don't... Jake, Jake unplugged. Not a, Yeah. Like, um, you know, I don't normally talk with that voice that I do in the videos. I don't um talk as you're still kind of doing it though yeah but anyway um i wanted to do this like almost faux podcast format even though i don't have like a real mic and you know audio recording equipment at all but uh, i i wanted i wanted to me and cam were just having a conversation about the movie that is the topic of discussion today may december and we we're having a really awesome conversation about it and I want to do more spoiler stuff and give you guys more in-depth thoughts that aren't just, I love the direction, I love the cinematography, I love the acting, I love the script, this is what the script is saying. I want to delve more into the themes and, and what's being told to us. So, um, this is a spoiler review um, of May, December. We are not, you know, we are fully doing that. Um, spoiler warning. Yeah. And it's completely unscripted. We don't have any notes, nothing like that. So let's talk about our thoughts going into the movie. So I, I think I just recommended it to you, right? You know, she's like, hey, let's just watch this movie. Yeah, it was either that. Well, originally it was either that or The Lobster. And I chose yeah. The Lobster. And we watched that. And, and that was great. It. I liked that a lot. Good, yes. Um, and then we watched This one was just next. So we yeah. watched it. So um, we watched this movie. You know, I was going to review it, whatever. I had heard about it from Karsten Runquist. Uh, I, he's a reviewer that I've been following for a while. I don't, like... He's not one of those reviewers. I'm like, man, he really is saying what I'm thinking. Um, like, I disagree with his opinions a lot. But, um, you know, I, I normally respect what he has to say. Um, so, and he was, like, very positively reviewing this movie. So, um, I wanted to, you know, check it out. It was on Netflix... Yeah. Easy Why not? Um, and then I like realized what it was actually about, and I got yeah. like a lot. I got a lot more interested in it. Yeah, like like Jake watched the trailer, and I didn't. Like we were talking about this because he was talking. Oh, you didn't look at the do your spoiler disclaimer. Do you want to still do that? No, I can do that now. Um, in in the the outtake that you guys won't see of uh, this video, where I was just trying to review the the movie normally. Um. I mentioned how what my review is spoil what my rules are with uh, spoilers in my reviews, so I, I just want to say it like very plainly here, I guess, um, that it's if it happens within the first ten minutes of the movie, if it's said in the trailer or if it's said in the description of the film, it's fair game. I can talk about it. If not, I won't talk about it. So that's obviously not applicable here, but. Um, Full spoiler warning. Yeah. Content warning. Oh, yeah. Actually, big content warning for a lot of very... Trigger warning. Yeah. For a lot of sexual abuse, especially towards children. Um, there's a lot of heavy themes of that in here, and we're going to be talking about that kind of stuff. So, you know, if that makes you feel uncomfortable or, you know, you don't just don't want to hear about that, there's your warning. So, yeah. Yeah, we had to cut there. But... Um, <coughs> content warning this obviously so cameron um we talked about i saw the trailer i did not see the trailer i had no expectations so much to my dismay when i think it's a lot better if you don't watch the trailer and have no idea what's it about yeah what it's about. yeah because like i i was like oh my god like yeah. i was very shocked with like what gracie like the main character had actually done because in the beginning, like, like she doesn't GAF, and, like, obviously her husband, who is, like, the victim, is, you know, like, living his life, gardening, etc., and, like, now they're making a movie about her, so you're under this, like, premise where it's, like, everything's cool, it's calm, but there's this, like, very foreboding music that I thought was, like, really cool, mm -hmm. because it would, like, it would be, like, something so random that was happening, and then there was this, like, music, and it was, like, something sinister is happening here. It added a layer of, like, like 
I think it lulled you into this sense of security and like, oh, maybe this is getting overblown. Like, you know, maybe it just was nonsense. Maybe he just was like 22 or something, you know, and he was, and she was 36. So like, I don't love that relationship dynamic, like at all. That's still really weird, but like, that's not illegal. That's, that's like a whole other thing that I don't even want to talk like, you know, like that's something that other people have other views on and it's not like okay put you in jail yeah <laughs> like I, I guess i understand that a little bit but when i found out that he was 13 um she was 36 it just it, like and there's just more of those details i feel like being added throughout the entire movie and i feel like the the director is kind of saying to you that was all right there like mm-hmm. it was in front of you you just didn't want to believe that because of like, the double standard with pedophilia done towards younger boys. Yeah, especially, um, like, the whole thing where I feel like, honestly, the whole town and the way that, like, they, like, talk about it with Natalie Portman's character, who's, like, the actress who's, like, doing research for the movie about this situation. Like, I feel like the whole town, in a way, was, like, not conditioned, but, like, went through this together. Because they talk about, like, it's, like, they're, like, on an island, and it's, like, very community, like, communal. And it's, like, the way everybody talks about it is, like, oh, yeah, like, that, the thing, it happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they've all, like, moved on, and, like, and, like, there are people in town that, like, support Gracie and, like, like, order cakes from her and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it's like very strange. Yeah, and but they it like uh, sorry. That's it's okay. like all like a big metaphor for like being conditioned and like groomed to like to like just deal with it. Yeah. And move on. Um, there's a so I, I feel like we should um, you know, establish some plot details, like exposition. So Natalie Portman's character is researching uh, the role of Julianne Moore's character, Gracie. Elizabeth was Natalie Portman. Okay, Eliz- Elizabeth was, uh, she was the actress who was researching the, researching the life of Gracie, played by Julianne Moore. She's voguing in this picture. Who, um, uh, is groomed and sexually assaulted, mul- like, several thousands of, not thousands, but, you know, tens of times when he was a minor oh yeah uh, before they entered in a false relationship and she groomed him and inevitably married him and they had three children together and it was like premeditated because they talked about how like she worked at a pet store and like hired him and like and like advocate like created a job position to hire him like that kind of thing like she set it all up and they have And, and then there's the original husband of um Gracie and her kids, and one of their kids comes into play earlier, uh, later on, named Georgie. Um, so Natalie, Natalie Portman's character is very omniscient. She, not omniscient, that's not the right word, very uh, neutral. She does not really take a side in any of this. She is almost sociopathically examining the lives of these people, right? She's so hard to read because she is reading someone else. Yeah. And, like, she is fully dedicated. Like, she came into this, like, when we, when she, she is in this movie. Like, the movie starts, and she has clean slated herself. Like, she is there in this town to do one thing, and it's embody this woman and, like, put herself in her shoes and take over her spirit. And it's, like... It was really cool. <laughs> like, yeah. just the way that, like, the scenes where they would be, like, together, like, in the mirror or something, and she would be, like, perfectly, yeah. like, like, you could see it happening. Yeah. And She's such a good actress. Like, when she's talking to um, the, well, yeah, yeah, major props to Natalie Portman. She, I, like, again, she's one of those actresses where it's, like, I don't even know if I want to say it in the review, just because, like, if it's not her best performance ever, like, we know. She's... 10 out of 10, she's awesome. She's great in everything she's in. Okay. Um, But what I think is so interesting about her character, and I remember what I was saying, is because, like, we're given her to follow because she is also part of this, like, moral ambiguity theme that we have going on where, like, everybody, we were talking, just talking about this, 
that 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 like nihilistic attitude of you know not not to like a super large extent but you know todd I, todd haynes does this in his movies where he'll, he'll say like you know you're either a, a victim or an abuser and that's very much the story being told here um how everyone around gracie is either a fellow abuser or one of her victims and natalie portman isn't any of those she is purposely inserting herself into this like web of manipulation and and sadness and grief that julianne moore's character gracie can't read her you know and that i think i think that makes her feel threatened and causes her to lash out on her victims and that's even scarier i think is like yes natalie portman's character isn't the best like she's definitely not a good person mm. But I think juxtaposing her with with Gracie only makes Gracie that more terrifying. Yeah. And it's very interesting, like, watching, like, a very obvious, like, narcissist and, like, and, like, a woman who f I think she fully believes that she did nothing wrong. And, like, I still don't know if, like, the director was trying to to show us a sympathetic side or was like trying to show that she's not just a narcissist and she is hurt too and like and like provide some background for that like explanation for mm -hmm. us to be like oh like she was like raped like that kind of thing or if it's just all a part of like she is hurt like hurt people hurt people you know what i mean no. like i still can't figure out what exactly like showing like that she cries every night before bed and she, her being like i am naive like that kind of thing like well I, like i think those scenes should provide that she is human and that she has a consciousness and again like that's more terrifying is yeah. her being aware that she's doing all of this but is still doing it to add to her own delusion of this like perfect life that she has mm -hmm. and this perfect person that she fell in love with and i think it's also really interesting that we get to see the husband's side of it of how he just really is still a very well like like the innocence is what i'm trying to say uh i like the husband's care like i love that we get to focus on the husband's character because of yeah. his innocence and how he just wants to, like, in his mind, he just wants to be a good husband. He just wants to be a good father to his kids. But he has this feeling that he doesn't understand this lack of, you know, this, this sense of longing, of, of freedom, and of a, of a life of his own that he doesn't even realize is there in the first place. And obviously it takes Natalie Portman's character to bring that out of him. But I also like that it's not a, you know happy ending for for him it's like his whole world is being turned upside down because gracie has her hooks in that deep yeah um go ahead i think joe Yu does like a really really cool job of like Michael like Fitz. physically like through body language like showing that like around gracie he's still that 13 year old boy like in the way that like in certain scenes where she's like come here and you can see like you know when like like a little kid walks over and like their arms are kind of like hanging low and like just through like the body language i noticed that a lot like he is like he grew up way too fast and still i think like when he feels vulnerable like not like regresses but like he doesn't know you know what i mean mm. how to act in these adult situations because he didn't get a chance to learn and grow on his own with people his age like totally especially like in like relationships left her husband and cheated on him she i think that a part of her like preyed on this young boy because she could mold him into exactly who she wanted to be and like didn't have to worry about like dealing with a grown man in a relationship and she could find this boy and make him like like Groom him. Groom him. Yeah. yeah, groom him into the perfect husband, and she didn't care about the consequences because that was what was going to work for her. Mm -hmm. And I think Does that makes sense. No, that makes total sense, uh, and I think it's a great point to add. Gracie is such a 
interesting antagonist because I love interesting antagonists. she is so methodical and like well planned out with like just this systematic plan of completely breaking down this completely innocent person that you know could have been anyone like they they even they bring that up that's like a big theme throughout the third act of the film is um you know like what, what if it? what would has yeah what, what what would his life be like thank you Cameron. yeah um and i think that great like you were saying with grooming him like she could shape him and that's saying a lot about like i i think more so she was a psychologically damaged person because of the tragedies that happened in her childhood Mm -hmm. uh and that molded her into this like 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 delusional person that believes that if she really wants something she has to like take it in her own hands and control it completely like with the hunting like she has this side of her and as much as she tries to repress it like with the like the damage that's like bubbling over in the pot that that's the way that it comes out in terms of like stuff like that like especially because it like is reminiscent of her childhood and like certain things she does like with her daughters and her relationship like she got she like can be cruel towards them too and like the way that she sometimes like lets on like the amount of power that she does hold in terms of like manipulation like when they when they're arguing in the bedroom after he comes back from Natalie Portman's house Mm -hmm. and she just completely shuts him down like like he has no power in the relationship nothing changed like this is just a horrible thing that happened and like even when it's getting worse staring it in the face yeah it's getting worse and Mm -hmm. like it's I think supposed to be this like cautionary tale of um, one not getting too overly involved in stuff like this and becoming obsessed with it to the point of where you're almost living it. Um, it's just that like there is in our society a double standard when it comes to uh, young boys being assaulted and taken advantage of. Um, and I think like especially by older women. I'm like I'm not trying to start uh, whatever that it, that just happens like it's a thing that happens and I think by making this movie it's shedding a light on this just this isn't just a news story this isn't just a scandal this is just like a, oh my god whoa this is a horrible and like one of the most evil things that you can do to another human being and um like this is the after effects yeah this Mm -hmm. is the after effects of it and this is how it affects not only the abuser's life not only the victim's life but everybody else around him yeah um certain flaws i i don't think that um some of these scenes in the second act really needed to be there i think that the movie at times could move at too much of a slow pace and, and could almost feel, like, too conversationally and interview-esque, like, too faux documentary. Um, and that's just kind of, like, a trapping that this kind of genre falls into. Um, but other than that, I, I, I'm, I don't have anything to say. You got anything else to say? I thought it yeah. was a very good movie. Yeah, it was, it was really solid and, like, better when you talk about it with other people. It gets better uh, the more you yeah. think about it. I love so, about movies yeah, yeah. Let's give our ratings. I'm gonna give uh, May December like a, sh- a really strong A minus. What is what number is that out of five? Four, four out of five. Should I give it a four out of five? Sure, if you want to. I think on Letterboxd mm-hmm. I gave it a three and a half, but I think after thinking about it again, I give it a four out of five stars. So let me know what you guys thought of this format. I really want to do this more often, just like a conversation. Like, obviously, more often than I'll be Cam, but I could have, like, my friends on the show, too, other people. Um, 
yeah, just because, you know, I want to break up the, monot the monotony, monotony of the normal video routine and um, do some more stuff like this. So um, let me know what you guys thought of May, December in the comments. Um, I would really love to hear your perspectives of this movie. Um, Cameron, do we have anything else you want to say? I would like to say, leave a comment down in that down below of if you like this movie, if you saw this movie, or anything of that sort, anything you want to say, just leave a comment, interact with Jake, and he'll definitely respond because he's awesome and smart, and make sure to subscribe so you can keep seeing cool stuff like this. I'll be back, and make sure to like the video if you liked it, and if you didn't like it, like it just in case. Thanks for watching.